the study of astronomy is the study really of everything outside the Earth's atmosphere. And so astronomers are people who study those things and are concerned with anything from the planets in our solar system to the sun, to other stars and even distant galaxies and the universe itself. Astronomy and eclipses are really just looking up at the sky. It's a human experience. Our ancestors did it. They used it to know when to plant the crops, when to harvest the crops, things like that, right? It's always been kind of a part of the human experience looking up at the sky. And astronomy today is still an extension of those same things. We bring that to the public with our images, say from rovers on Mars to the latest James Webb Space Telescope images. It's easy to get kind of excited and, and feel that sense of wonder and curiosity again. The uh, future of astronomy will probably involve ever bigger and bigger telescopes as we want to see fainter and fainter and further and further away to the edges of the universe. And so we need bigger telescopes. And so probably a lot of astronomy in the future will be moving that direction as we put more telescopes into space and bigger telescopes here on the ground. To become an astronomer, people go to college for usually four years and then go on to a graduate program. And so I, for example, have a PhD and that can take a little bit of a range of time, but kind of on average, usually about uh, five or six years after college. And so most astronomers have PhDs. Some other folks who are still actively involved in astronomical things maybe just get a master's degree, which is two years after college, and they often will run science centers or planetaria, things like that. Astronomy is kind of an extreme science because the environments that we're dealing with inside stars and galaxies, the conditions aren't like anything we have on Earth. We're really taking often work that a lot of other disciplines have done from math and physics, maybe in the future biology and geology as we explore elsewhere in the solar system. And so we push those ideas that other scientists might have and see if they really work in those extreme environments. Some examples of things that astronomy and, and physics have been really important for that you probably use every day is a GPS or your phone navigation system. And so that eclipse back in 1919 that astronomers used to test Einstein's general relativity, that physics, that information is necessary to make GPS work. And if we didn't use general relativity and special relativity to make corrections in how those light signals travel from our satellites in space to the Earth, you wouldn't be able to navigate using GPS. If you've ever looked up at the sky at night, you see the stars, it's hard not to feel a sense of wonder and awe and the curiosity that it invokes in seeing the cosmos.